Okay. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, I uh, really look forward to have this uh, dialogue with the two of you on the topic of edible insects and the two cookbooks that you have been instrumental in preparing as part of Agriculture for Food Security 2030, AgriForce 2030 program. My name is Annelie Sundin. I work uh, with communication and engagement in, uh, in the program. Uh, these uh, cookbooks are now available on our website, uh, eslu.se slash agrifose, and you can find them via the links below this video. Uh, as more and more uh, people are becoming aware of today, insects can be uh, very nutritious and can be a good replacement of animal protein, uh, such as beef and pork. This has major benefits for our climate, if we are to reduce our meat intake. It can also have potential to combat food insecurity, for example, when crops fail in a year with a lot of drought. Uh, edible insects can become essential for alleviating hunger. Uh, edible insects are common in many parts of Africa. Uh, however, today in many urban areas, they are losing in popularity. You both set out on the quest of making the edible insect sector flourish uh, in both Zimbabwe and Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, as well as beyond these two countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as part of that quest, uh, you have been together with uh, brilliant chefs and researchers uh, developing two cookbooks on edible insects. So before I start with my first question for you, I, could you please quickly introduce yourself? If we start with Lindley. My name is uh, Lindley Chimona Carlton, and I am an associate professor in rural development at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. I am particularly interested in issues of food security and poverty alleviation, and not least when it comes to gender equality within these areas. Thank you, Lindley. Excellent. And then uh, Robert in Zimbabwe. Okay. My name is Robert Musundire. I'm an associate professor of entomology at Chinoy University of Technology. I'm interested in working on the utilization of edible insects as food and feed. I've been working in the agri for sale program since 2016, uh, mainly to promote uh, handling, uh, safety, and marketing in Zimbabwe and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Thank you, thank you very much. So, okay, my, uh, uh, my first questions is a little bit around the why. So why is it that you uh, came to this point to write these two cookbooks? Uh, and of course you can tell us a little bit more about them, but what do you think that these cookbooks can contribute with, uh, especially in terms of food insecurity? And I would like to start with Lin Lee, if if you think. You can. So when, you know, the issue of food security and Agenda 2030 began to gain momentum, much of the discussions around animal source foods in relation to nutrition, in relation to climate change, but also in relation to stewardship started to take form. I found that there was one voice that was really missing, and that was the voice of women. And in this collaborative project together with um, Robert, you know, what I found missing as a link was working with scientists from African institutions within the area of entomology or entomophagy, and really trying to work together from SLU's viewpoint of looking at issues around global development, but also sustainability, thinking how could we look into these issues together at the same time as bring these forgotten voices of women to the forefront. And so with Robert, the interest was, Robert, can you assist and work more on these issues of understanding 
insects and in Zimbabwe, but also can we gather and benefit from the knowledge that you have from a scientific evidence-based viewpoint mm. with respect to insects mm -hmm. to working in the Democratic Republic of Congo where we are working with women that would like to develop enterprises around insects, but maybe don't really have this understanding of the science involved in terms of processing, but also right. preparation and thereby consumption and making sure mm. that they're marketed. Mm. So I went on to engage more with the women in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And they were these fantastic women from Afa. And these were a group of 30 women to begin with. And many of them were actually not, they were literate, but maybe not as, you know, not at, the, at that level of how can we now look into this from a scientific basis. But they had so much knowledge yeah. in terms of what the insects were and how these particular insects featured in, in various you know, recipes and dishes. Mm. At the same time, because we were in Kinshasa, they were very cognizant of the fact that the limitation in terms of consumption of insects was the price factor. They were getting increasingly expensive and rare. Mm. And so how could we then not lose this wonderful knowledge basis that they had, both in terms of experiential um, lessons on which ones are edible, which insects are edible, how do you collect them, how do you prepare them, how do you preserve them, and when are they best consumed, and how do you balance consumption in relation to availability and price factors. So for me, meeting Marianne and her colleagues, and together with Beatrice, my colleague from Sweden, going through this participatory exploratory phases of, so which insects exist here? Can we do a market survey? And I'm telling you, these women went out and collected and brought back with them for a discussion, so many different types of insects <laughs> that they could then tell the story of how it reminded them either of where they came from in the Democratic Republic of Congo, when they consumed them in terms of their childhood, but also as adults or as mothers, and how they were dreaming of doing more than just preparing for themselves, but preparing for a bigger audience yeah. to preserve the culture and the knowledge which they had. So this for me was the driving force. How do I get the knowledge of African women, their experiences, their expertise documented? Because hitherto, many of the cookbooks around insects, as you have said in the beginning, the interest from the Europeans and mm. the, you know, the other um, rich countries uh, is interesting, yes. But how about documenting and sharing the expertise that has existed that these women have? So For a that long was time. really the yeah. driving thing. Okay. I'll, let, uh, I'll let Robert in here. Um, please, uh, what's your comments? Uh, and uh, you know, what led you to, to create these uh, cookbooks, Robert? Yeah, well, in the beginning, we made observations in the traditional consumption practices of edible insects, mainly in Zimbabwe. We've been doing this work for quite some time, since 2004. And um, when, we, when I met Lindley in 2016, that was the turning point now, because she has been uh, interacting with women from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now from our point, we had observed that insects were just being cooked in the traditional manner with minimal value addition and processing. And in some instances, uh, insects such as termites, if you cook them the way they are, mm -hmm. there were issues to do with digestion. Uh, oh, yeah. Some of them are not properly uh, taken through the system. So Lindley brought these exciting ideas about uh, processing and, and adding value. 
that's when we started to uh, have some thinking around uh, what products uh, we could make. Mm -hmm. So uh, through that interaction, we then uh, realized that if we come up with uh, innovation in the products, it could even encourage new consumers to come in and then uh, we could increase the number of people that are consuming insects mm. as food. Oh, that, thank you, Robert. That, uh, this, both of your stories here gave really a full picture of mm. why you landed with these uh, cookbooks. But can you tell me a little bit uh, about, about the actual process of writing these recipes together um, and how were different chefs involved how were the researchers involved in in the actual recipes and the photos that you've taken etc maybe robert you could start here any comments on that all right uh, based on the documentation of the traditional practices i had a uh, a manuscript regarding the traditional uh, preparation and consumption practices, and they are based on some work that has been done had been done in Congo uh, by mm. Linley. I approached a group of uh, chefs at Chino University of Technology in the Department of Hospitality and Tourism. Then um, I flied this idea that we need innovative products uh, based on these practices. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. I, I allow, we, together with Linley again, we allowed them to uh, innovate around those products. Mm -hmm. And the result was so fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exciting. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to actually uh, try and cook some here at home. I just need to get hold of the insects. Linley, do you have any, uh, any comments? Yeah, so, uh, you know, they, the process in Zimbabwe was much more academic, uh, more exact science, I would say. And you will see the difference when you look at the two books. You, you pick up the cookbook from Zimbabwe. It is very precise with measurements, portion sizes, and you know, grams and, 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 and those things. Whereas the process with the women, as I told you, these were a group of women coming from many different walks of... Um, socioeconomic class. Mm. And so the whole thing was very organic. So firstly, it was, how do you explain the idea of documenting their wealth of information into a cookbook? Mm. So um, I was traveling from Dar es Salaam to, um, um, to Kinshasa. And at the airport in Dar es Salaam, I happened to come across a cookbook which was written by an African chef. And he was trying to show the world the importance of African cuisine. And what I liked is how there was lots of pictures, storytelling, and then making these typical African dishes into this cookbook. So I bought that cookbook and brought it with me um, to the group of women together with my colleague, uh, Beatrice Kindembe. And then I said to the women, can you look at this cookbook? And if it's, it's, the dishes were actually from my birth country, Malawi. And I said, do you think we could do something um, similar with insects, but from the DRC Congo? And I will leave this book with you and you look at this book and see if you could do something similar, but, but with insects. So the book, not even at the end of the day, had passed around several hands and be like, yeah, of course we can do this. Yeah. yeah, I already know what I can do with my, you know, I can contribute with these dishes. And I said, excellent. So we left them to work on the dishes that they would like to prepare. And then using that cookbook as an inspiration, mm. we the scientists came back to Sweden and um, I've forgotten how many months it took. And I think I shared with you, uh, Robert, if you remember, I said, Robert, look at what the women have come up with. They sent me a document, which, you know, they had uh, their recipes. And then, you know, I said, this is excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the process, they said, you know, we could actually open a restaurant in Kinshasa. 
together as women. And I said, really? Yes, we're going to ask the mayor of Kinshasa if he can give us you know, uh, some space in the city where we can have an insect restaurant. You know, and that uh, restaurant is going to be called uh, Le Delicious, the the Mikese, you know, insect like delicacies. Yeah, like, like the book. The book. So that's mm-hmm. actually the name of the restaurant in Kinshasa. And then they they took it one step further and they said, but we also need endorsement because if we just do it and it's just us women and nobody knows yeah. about us, they may people may not really be convinced. So we're going to look for the top chef in Kinshasa and ask him to you know, put some recipes, uh, insect recipes in the cookbook. And so that's um, the gentleman that you see in the cookbook who is one of the top chefs in Kinshasa that made those insect recipes. So the thing mm. just organically grew and, and the mm. women you know, took it up themselves and, and made it what it is. And Robert was always in the background because I was like, Robert, I just need to check, are these insects edible insects or could they be causing some allergies and, and there robert was really good they even sent you some samples didn't we robert? yes yeah. yes ah, excellent what a story i really like this story and it feels uh, at some point maybe you should send one of the cookbooks to this uh, uh chef that wrote that book about the malawian recipes yes uh, as a thank you yeah no <laughs> it, it is started it's, there yeah, no, his name is Justin Kamanga, and I, uh, um, yeah, no, the book is, is really picturesque and very easy nice, to follow. Nice. Uh, Robert, this makes me think, do you want to say anything about any of the, there were several spin-off effects in Zimbabwe uh, f- from the project uh, to, to do with the cookbook as well? Maybe is this something that you would like to uh, tell us? That's a spin-off mm-hmm. effect. Yeah, under under the ad for say 2019, the one that we have been working in 2019, one of the objectives was to promote improved household uh, insect consumptions as part of their diet. So we realized, uh, yes, there are some traditional insect consumers, but there were those that were willing to consume insects, but in the form that they were. So uh, again, based on experiences from the first phase that Linda was uh, working on, mm-hmm. we uh, then uh, deliberately decided to actually innovate in terms of improving processing and adding value to these uh, insects. Uh, this was a spin-off from uh, the, the project, uh, from the Agri for Say 2030 project, because mm-hmm. Uh, from the marketing, the handling part, the story had to go all the way to the table mm-hmm. where these products then had to appeal well and mm-hmm. test well to the consumers. So that's a, 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 a direct spin off from the agri 2030 project. Thank you so much, both of you, for taking your time. Um, I, I can't wait to uh, post this video and share it with the world as well as the, these two beautiful cookbooks. Thank you very much. I think we will conclude here. Thank you. Thank you. And watch this space. Robert and I are not going away. This is just a journey. Yeah. Watch this space. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Can't wait.